Welcome back to AgriTalk. I'm your host, Chip Laurie. Got Davis Michelson with me. Um, Hello. Yes. Yeah. Davis, totally. Margie Echocamp, the mm-hmm. editor at The Scoop, um, mm-hmm. has been talking about a survey that the Association of Equipment Manufacturers has done to okay. – and, and the survey, it, it – well, number one, there's – there's some information in there on how much technology has been adopted, uh, how it's being used, how, some of the benefits of the technology that is out there. And they did a heck of a job with this survey, and I, it, it's interesting. I want to get some of the details right now from Kurt Blades. Kurt is the Senior VP of Agriculture Services at the Association of Equipment Manufacturers, AEM. He joins us right now. Kurt, welcome to AgriTalk. Hey, thanks for having me on, Chip. You bet. Glad that you're here. Glad you're here. Let's put some groundwork uh, down on this survey before we get to some of the findings. When was it done? Well, the uh, the environmental the study is called the Environmental Benefits of Precision Agriculture, and it's actually been in the works for about two years. Uh, and, and, it, and it came about with uh, when we were just posed with the question from some of our members saying, hey, has anybody ever benchmarked what the, you know, what, what is the environmental benefit of all of this uh, uh, precision agriculture is out in the field, tractors driving themselves and uh, section control and variable rate technology? And uh, you, we did a little bit dig and realized that there's nothing out there that's quantified it. But as you also know, it's logical that if a tractor's driving itself, it's going to be more efficient. It's going to use a little bit less fuel. It's going to use a little bit less active ingredient. So we attempted to try to put this together uh, in, in the study that, uh, that, that Margie mentions in, in, uh, yeah. in the scoop, as well as, uh, you know, things that we've been pushing out there right now. Right, right. Okay. Uh, who was included in the survey? Who, who provided the, the answers? Well, this this actually was a uh, kind of a study of studies for for lack okay. of a better term. In fact, we uh, uh, we used first of all did a uh, you know let me back up just a little bit. As you know, there's a lot of good research out there about the economic benefits of precision agriculture on an individual farming operation. Uh, but what we what was kind of missing was that societal benefit. So what we did is that we first work with uh, you know the, kind of a literature review of all of the data that's out there. Uh, with uh, with universities and some private private groups that have done some some work on on uh, you know sort of the uh, the environmental benefit and then we we added to that a collection of experts from uh, from around the industry and around the world that have uh, sort of you know be able to put some quantifiable numbers on uh, things like carbon reduction or fuel reduction or, or uh, you know uh, uh, increased productivity. And then we finally rounded that out with a uh, with a with a series of consultants that uh, that really you know filled in the gaps and, and connected all the dots together, partnering with okay. a group called the Context Network to do most of the heavy lifting on this. Okay, interesting. Now, when I think of technology and AEM, I think tractors, I think combines, I think tillage equipment, but that's that's maybe too narrow of a view because we're also looking at technology and and the the benefits of technology on equipment like milkers and stuff like that you right bet. well this particular study doesn't dive into milkers but absolutely okay. a next generation of this will will be taking a look at that but you're you're right chip when we talk about equipment we're talking about all sorts of mechanization and yeah. it's not just you know tractors and bent iron it's ones and zeros and technologies and software all fall into the same category of of, of equipment that AEM represents. And then this study specifically is diving into that precision ag technology that's really used for growing right. crops for the most part. Okay. Okay. So let's get into some of the, the, uh, the findings, the discoveries here, the adoption of precision ag, what has it done? Where have we gained efficiencies? Well, the, the, the best place to look at for the adoption of precision ag or actually for the benefit of precision ag has simply to do with increased production. And so if you look at this, you know, increased production alone, we've seen, you know, some, some major in, you know, efficiency gains. Now, obviously, over the last 20 years, we've seen efficiency gains in, in production gains in production agriculture that are due to a lot of things, including uh, you know, new genetics and different tillage practices and other things, but we've been able to isolate specifically that we're we're ranking about 
4% of the total increase in production is directly tied to that um, adoption of precision agriculture. And that's using the technologies of auto guidance, variable rate okay. technology, and section control. And you know, just to put that in perspective, 4% increase in yield due to precision agriculture is the amount of about four and a half Yellowstone National Parks. So that's a lot of acreage that is, frankly, uh, hasn't been necessary to bring into production around the world to, to feed this growing society simply by adopting great technology. And that's at existing uh, adoption rates. Take right. that one step further, we find we kind of uh, anticipate another 6% gain can be uh, uh, achieved simply by more adoption of precision agriculture in North America alone. Okay. What is the adoption rate? I mean, it, it seems to me like when we're talking about um, the auto guidance or auto steer, whatever you want to call it, uh, it seems like every farmer I talk to is using it. But what is the real adoption rate out there, Kurt? Well, it absolutely varies by crop. It varies by region. Okay. It varies by a lot of different things. But, you know, I think, you know, most of the farmers that you're going to be talking to and knowing your old footprint with AgriTalk is, is largely Midwest and largely row crop. Corn and soybean adoption for auto guidance is around 60%. Cotton mm -hmm. is a little bit higher at about 80%. Sugar beets, things, uh, you know, tubers, things that are under the ground, uh, it's about 80% as well. So we're seeing pretty sizable adoption of, of row crops. Um, when you get into other areas like, you know, some of the specialty crops, hay and forage, you know, the, the adoption rates begin to, to go down just a little bit. It's also, you know, you know worthy of noting that, uh, you know, in some areas of the world where you've got big farms, like where I'm sitting here in Iowa, you got big farms or in Illinois or Ohio, we got big farms. It makes a whole lot of sense for auto guidance because you got those really big rows. Uh, but, you know, where my, where my family farms in Missouri, some of those smaller, uh, smaller plots are a little bit more hill. Uh, the auto guidance, you know, it, it, it has absolute value, but uh, the adoption rates are a little bit lower. Okay. All right. Um, cotton, it, leading the way there. Uh, it, it, is cotton leading the way in other, um, in, in other precision ag adoption? Well, cotton's an interesting one to take a look at, and you know, as you know, it's it's not a it's not a huge number of acres in North America, but it's a sizable right. amount. But why we specifically wanted to include cotton in this study is because we know that cotton is a uh, a crop protection uh, intensive crop, and uh, and so we we know that there's a lot of gains, a lot of environmental gains that, be, that can be that can be. Uh, you know, derived through that right. uh, adoption of technology. And a lot of that technology is, frankly, is driven by, you know, that efficiency that comes from, you know, being able to use things variable rate or section control. Right. Right. Okay. So what's next for this information that you've, that, that you've gathered, accumulated? Well, this study was designed, you know, farmers, we're, we're loving to talk to farmers about it because I want farmers to know that it's available out there to share. But this was not designed for farmers. This was designed for regulators. This was designed for uh, those that are not familiar with farming to, to really put some quantifiable numbers to you know, maybe you know, dispel some of the myths that technology uh, is a really good thing for farmers and a really good thing for the environment. And really want to tell that story that, hey, farmers, farmers got this. In fact, these adoption rates that you talk about, these were adopted because it makes sense for the farmer. The environmental benefits are just kind of a ride along. And what's great is that, you know, aggregated together, it makes a really big difference. But a farmer's still making those decisions to adopt that technology on their own. And so that's, that's the message that we've been bringing to uh, anyone that would listen, whether it's a regulator in D.C. or whether it's elected officials, you know, around the nation, even around the world, uh, or whether it's food companies and, and folks that are, are looking to make some decisions on the ingredients that they put into their into their uh, uh, you know consumer packaged goods to tell this positive story in a good way. Okay, it, can we use some of the findings to quantify just how much uh, benefit we're we're seeing from Precision Ag? A absolutely, absolutely. Okay. In fact, uh, you know we we again designed the study uh, to be and you know, we're partnering with uh, some of the commodity organizations, corn growers, American Soybean Association. Uh, Crop Life America have been primary sponsors, as well as most of the other uh, commodity organizations have been involved with this as well. But they are using the same data 
uh, to share with you know their membership and make it available to their farmers that get involved in in policy conversations as well as advocating on behalf of agriculture. And we designed this with you know easy sound bites that can be talked about, such as yeah. you know the amount of uh, acreage that can be avoided by use of precision agriculture or the amount of, of uh, you know fuel savings that uh, you know put it in 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 reference to the amount of cars taken off the road. These are sound yeah. bites that make a big difference to those non farm audiences. Excellent. Kurt, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. We all do. You bet. Thanks so much. You bet. That's Kurt Blade, Senior Vice President for Agriculture Services at the Association of Equipment Manufacturers.